episode of the revival of the beastly thoughts show how is everyone doing this week it is good to see everyone again this week guys hope everyone is doing well uh this week we've got a lot to talk about we've got some exciting news we got some uh new game announcements to talk about this week some other news as well uh probably talk about some e3 stuff because this is the final show before e3 next week we're all looking forward to it Anyways, though, if you guys do not know, this is a video game podcast. We record this every weekend. Uh, we are still working on a schedule a little bit, but we should be live again probably next Saturday, we're thinking. So, yeah, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, though. How is everyone doing? And uh, my good friends and co-hosts, let's begin, guys. How are you guys doing? Beastly Gamer, what is up? Oh, man, I'm feeling so good. I, I got to give all grace, first of all, and no all thanks to God. Uh, but second to the <laughs> ketogenic diet. Yep. I'm telling you guys, I was up... This morning at 6 o'clock a.m. doing things around the house, handling business. I've just been so full of energy, and my weight has been dropping off. And I'm, I want to be like Hector one day. Uh, <laughs> we all Emily aspire to be all, Hector. Yes, yeah. we want, you know, if oh, his yeah. name was Mike, it would all make sense. But um, I've been feeling really good, man. This is a great time to be a gamer. I'm super excited about what we're doing with this show. Uh, a quick announcement for people who are watching and listening, maybe in the podcast form. Uh, we are working on a definitive name, a definite name for this podcast. Yes. Of course, we call it Beastly Thoughts. It is Beastly Thoughts. That is what it started out as. We had some host changes. The show went on hiatus for a while, but mm -hmm. we're considering changing the name or keeping the name. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some names on Twitter, the Beastly Thoughts Twitter page, and uh, we're going to share that, and uh, we're going to let you guys do a, a vote. And basically, you guys can vote. You can come up with names. I mean, tell us what you think. What, uh, you know, uh, exemplifies what this podcast means for you. Give us some cool names. We don't want to be called the Apple Orange Podcast. We want to be something sick. Way to you know throw it old mean? school. <laughs> um, and, and, and if you guys have any ideas, let us know what you think. Um, if there, I know there are some people out there who have been following this show for a long time who would probably like to, you know, hear it stay Beastly Thoughts. To me, it doesn't really matter. I love this show. I love the energy. I love my, my brothers here, my co-hosts. And uh, we're going to find out for sure probably within the next week or so what the definite title is and what it will stay at. So follow us on Twitter. If you don't know, Beastly Gamer Max, uh, not too nerdy over here. And, of course, Rob Skull. You guys know him because he's the popular one of the group. Mm. Oh, follow us. No, no. Follow Beastly <laughs> Thoughts Live Twitter page and uh, help us come up with our, our new identity because we are – we're finding ourselves, and it's a hell of a lot of We fun. are. Me being 16, it's, it's you know, sad. i got to find myself. Uh, still working <laughs> on it, so. Yeah, Don't spend yeah. too much time in the bathroom alone. <laughs> That's Already how on you it. find yourself. <laughs> I, 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 I found I'm myself a, last night. Upset. Like, watch, watch yeah. next week. Someone's really going to put Apples and Orange podcast. Like, that's that's going to be the thing. It's going to win the vote now because Beastly just said that. Yeah. So we're going to be Apples Orange podcast. It's actually kind of catchy, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident, not too dirty. It was an accident. It doesn't okay? matter now. It's a meme. Hey, welcome back to the Apples and Oranges podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's just Apples and Oranges. <laughs> Stop it. I'm drinking. Oh. That would be said every five minutes of that podcast. Oh, Man, I'm really excited about today's episode, though, guys. Uh, E3 is upon us. There are leaks. There's speculation and gossip. Oh, goodness, I the feel, leaks lately. I, I'm serious. I feel like I'm inside of a girl's locker room. It's gossip everywhere about video games. Of course, I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. uh, and and at first, we were kind of not want, you know going to do a show this week, but there was just so much news. We all got together and said, hey, look, man, we got to get together and talk about some of this stuff. So let's do it. Beastly Thoughts. Let's get started with episode two. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. America. Oh, sorry. America. Fuck, Fuck yeah. Canada. Canada. Sorry, I can't say we that. Apologize. <laughs> I don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Yeah. Starting off today's podcast, Fallout 76 has been officially announced this week, a day after being teased via Twitter and on the Bethesda live stream. Few details are known at this time, but the game will be set during... 2102, around 50 years after the Great War, and is set the earliest of any Fallout game, taking place in Vault 76. Rumors via Kotaku's Jason Schreier suggest it will be an online and survival-based game, but not an MMO. What all this means remains to be seen. We will learn a lot more during Bethesda's E3 conference on June 10th. Thoughts. New Fallout game by Bethesda. Holy shit. That's it. Not too like, nerdy nailed it. He was, you know what? He was joking last week. I was he joking. Said, yeah, was <laughs> it came but true. On the inside, he knew he was right. That's what you had to say. This I part. was joking. I said Fallout. What I said, Fallout 5 is going to come out. <laughs> you knew what you were saying. Cracking up. Right. 
and then all of a sudden it's not really Fallout 5, it's 76, you know, you just put it, you know, it, it's kind of crazy it's happening, but the fact that I think it's going to be what they claim it might be is all multiplayer, like, like it's a survival thing, that that right. will be pretty, uh, it's different. That's but, really wild. Um, I, you know, this whole um, know. Um, Battle Royale thing is kind of taking the world by storm. I don't know if they're going in that direction. Oh, but God. It seems to be no. Everything Everything no. is, is kind of centered around this. All about Battle Royale. I mean, yeah, really, no, please. Who no. knows? I mean, who knows? I'm not a huge Battle Royale fan, but I got kids who live, breathe, eat, sleep, and poop. I say poop, I have a baby. Battle Royale. <laughs> uh, and so for me, the things that kind of stood out for me initially was this Fallout actually looks the way I thought Fallout 4 should look. Did you guys notice the new aesthetic? It looks so clean and pristine. And, yeah. It looks like they're using a, a revamped engine to make this game. I don't mind the, the multiplayer aspect of it, especially now, because I have a pretty locked uh, multiplayer partner, you know, with Kate. So every game that comes out, no matter what it is, if I buy one, we get two for free. We get the second one for free because we game share. And so if it's a multiplayer, we could kind of get into it and experience it. I'm actually pretty excited about this. Hector, I, I'm like you. I was completely blown yeah. away uh, with the reveal of this. Because this is not Bethesda's MO. Uh, of course, they had Fallout last. Uh, and so you would think, anyone would think, because uh, Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series uh, kind of go hand in hand with one another. One comes out, then the other comes out, then the other comes out, usually, unless it's like Fallout New Vegas and things like that. But I completely didn't expect this. I expected to hear something about a new Elder Scrolls game. Uh, and I'll probably end up jumping on this and trying it. I got Fallout 4. I didn't beat it. Uh, after a while, other things mm -hmm. came my way, but this does look fresh. And I like video games. What do you guys think about this reveal? So, the, when you said reveal, let's, let's go over the reveal real quick, which is the weirdest thing ever. If you guys saw, if you didn't, obviously you did not watch it. I think it was 24 hours straight or whatever. Like, and it was there for the whole thing, yeah. BS. <laughs> Like, they just had so like, an action figure, like, little toys moving around ever so slightly. Like, it was the weirdest reveal ever, but it worked because they got thousands and thousands and thousands of views. There's a, at one point, what was it, 100 and something thousand people watching? 140,000 was the most I saw. Yeah. 40,000 people watching that, doing nothing. Imagine <laughs> if we could do scream. that. Like, we, if we could make, like, a Twitch stream. And like you get paid for it. Like, people are just watching it. Like, 100,000 <laughs> people watch you just move something an inch. And they're like, oh, this is it. Oh, wait, nothing happened. And the worst you, part I is, didn't watch it. Are you telling me this really happened? They yeah. They really yeah. had little toys and stuff. Like, they yeah. had little things, like, moving. And, like, there's people hiding behind a set, like, moving something, like, an inch. And, like, every so often move it slightly to make people think yeah. they're going to announce something. They didn't. And they didn't announce it until the stream was over. That's when they the announced stream? it. 24 hours, I believe. No way. Yeah, it just went on the whole time. Like, there's like a starting soon screen, and then, yeah, occasionally, like, the littlest things would move. It was so funny. It's like Bethesda just knows how to tease people. It was awesome. It was so That's funny. The worst tease. How they set it up. Yeah. It was it's awesome. It's funny how teases like that only work on the stream. It's like if a girl teased you in the bedroom for like six hours. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> I'm just being, you know, I'm, I'm going for my own life experience. Imagine that. How pissed off you'd be. You'd probably be uninterested in about two hours if you can keep your interest that high for two hours. Yeah, I don't but know. But 24 if... hours you're watching the screen, you see a dial move. It, oh. it, was, it was kind of funny because I don't know, like, whether you guys like Angry Joe or not. Like, some people like it, some people don't. It was funny because he, he started joking around saying, you know what? Like, he went on Twitch and he did a stream too and he's hiding behind his couch and he moved like an action figure ever so did often. Did he really? And, like, oh, wow. You saw people watching him do that. It was funny. He was trying to do it at the hey, same DJ? time as Tesla does. So it, it was it was really funny. Like, it was good. Like, <laughs> uh, as, far, as far as Fallout 76, are you guys interested in this? Have you guys gotten Fallout fatigue? No, not even close. I love these games and the fact that it's Bethesda Game Studios again, because Fallout 3 and 4 are some of my favorite games ever, especially 3. I think 3 is even better, personally. Fallout 3 is better, of course. Yeah, yeah. agreed, yeah. Fallout um, 4 is Fallout 3, 3.5, you know, it's so similar in, in, in play style the way it looked. It know. is. I mean, it's still a great game, but yeah, I like that they're changing things up. Uh, obviously, there's a ton we don't know about. Like, it's all rumors. It's like this whole yeah. online thing. People were thinking it's like an MMO. I know Jason Schreier kind of yeah. said, don't you know, dial back your expectations. Uh, it's not really a traditional style game. He kind of pulled back from that and said it will be, but it's just got online elements. So is this basically like Fallout 4 with co-op? Like, we don't 
We don't know. We have no idea uh, if it takes more emphasis on base building, if it takes place a lot oh, in Vault 76, suck. which it seems like it probably will. Well, so, yeah. It does. In, in, there's keys in the, like the trailer. It did say build. Like it kept mentioning it emphasized build. Rebuild. Yeah, and we like, have to rebuild. That's why. Yeah, that's why I'm like, man. Like, is it gonna be something like? And some people rumored it as well. That is it gonna be something that you go out in the world? And it won't be. It'll be limited where you go to. You grab things. You go back to rebuild. Like, is that what you're doing? Your survival part is going out there. Literally, you have to go and, grab resources. And then you yeah, have to build. Come back. Is that what it is? I think that'll be cool. You know? Like it really could that, be. That might be. Yeah. Imagine the three of us jumping out. Well, right. Uh, You'd have, Robbie, you'd have to come back to council. No, you wouldn't. Because, Hector, you're, you're 100% PC now, right? And yeah, P um, yeah, well, I have PC, council, whichever one. I mean, but for something like this, I would do PC, PC. because it's a lot. Yeah. When you have to equip things and unequip things, like I, anything like that, I always feel like but it's I'm not so good at that stuff. I feel <laughs> like just... the rock monster in a never-ending story. These hands. Well, you could bind things. You know, you bind the keys to what you want. I feel like it's a lot quicker to do it like that than, you know. So that's why. But I, it's kind of it's kind of weird how it worked though. Like, but that's the thing. Would it would it be cooperative, or would it be when it said multiplayer? Is there are we against each other? Like Ooh, we still know how they have a whole works. bunch of wood. Yeah, let's go take that wood. Yeah, so saying like you don't know because the survival part. What's who are you surviving from? Like other players, or are you surviving from like and you know like the. I think it would become redundant computers. if it was all NPCs out in the world. Well, of course it's Fallout, so it's going to have. There's going to be radiation know, and stuff like that yeah, too. Yeah, there's going to be radiation yeah. and places, but you could imagine that they'd probably have factions or people who could log in and be the enemy, just to take your stuff. And how many people could go on at the same time though? Like that's there's so many questions. Is like. Uh, the what future it... is now. Okay, this is Ready Player One in the making. Pretty soon we're going to be living. In virtual worlds, we won't go to work anymore. Everybody's going to be 400 pounds. Say goodbye to those muscles. Not too many. Oh. <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're all going to just be sitting in our computers and, you know, everything is going to fall to the wayside because this is the future. People like playing games together and being in these alternate realities. It, it just seems so fun. All right. So what do we got next, Robbie? All right. Ooh, something I'm totally not excited about. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of All right. Assassin's Creed Odyssey has been officially announced a short time after being leaked the same morning via a GameStop keychain promoting the game. The game is rumored but not confirmed to be set in ancient Greece and will be a sequel to last year's Origins. We will learn more at Ubisoft's E3 conference on June 11th. And also, this is the 11th main Ass Assassin's Creed game now to be leaked before an announcement. 11th. Yeah. Oh, so it's yearly tradition for these games to get me, leaked. First of all, let me, I gotta say something. I'm tired of this leak stuff. This is not leaked. When it's a company does this every single year, they do it on purpose. Yes. This is Apple. It's oh, like, the oh, new oops. Apple yeah. leaked. They always have the iPhone that's leaked every year. It's leaked. Get the, everyone knows it's not leaked, okay? And another thing. Yeah, we true. came down to leak <laughs> keychains. Keychains? GameStop yeah. promotion well, keychains. Yeah. Keychains, people. Like, that's what we came for. Forget about the game. Oh, my God, there's a keychain. How do we know they're not coming out of Assassin's Creed cartoon? And that's a keychain <laughs> for the cartoon. We don't know. <laughs> this is just you a cartoon gotta, game, yeah. This is just a uh, cartoon series. It's not an actual uh, video game. I don't know if you guys remember. I was just never, you know, after the first Assassin's Creed and the second one, they just started becoming more and more convoluted to me. Uh, I actually have Origins on PC, but I haven't played it. Oh, it's so good. Beastly, give it a try. It's a really great game. It's a lot better than the last few. I'll say that. Way better. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks great. I think I went through maybe the initial 20 minutes before I went back to Doom on PC. This is when I first got my PC, and I realized what PCs can do compared to consoles. So, like, Doom was my go-to. Yeah. Uh, but I might give it a try. I might give it a shot and, and try to get back into the world. You know, yeah. as you get older, you have less tolerance for long, drawn-out stories. That's why I've been playing The Last of Us for the last couple of days. After Kate and I beat Detroit... I was like, damn it. She was like, okay, we got to start Muster Hunter World now. And I was We're like, going to we see Last of Us Part 2 at E3? We have to start it? Oh, man. That's going to be awesome, too. You know, one one thing, though, it has to do with this. Um, do you think that games are starting to lean more towards that like Dark Souls battle, like the way you like fight now? Because like, even the Assassin's Creed, like, that was like that. You see God of War. Like They're more leaning towards... That that's like the way that people like to battle, like it's the better, way yeah. you around. Yeah. And I feel like I'm seeing more and more games act like that when it, when it's something that's combat, like they they do that same type of style. It's not necessarily the same. Hellblade, they try to do their own way. Like that over the shoulder kind of combat style. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of crazy, right? And, Every, and it it's works the games so well. Yeah. It works so well. Like if you're doing any kind of melee battling, 
You know, it's much better than the old ways of God of War. You just run and, and button mash a bunch of buttons and attack someone. It's, it's more strategic and, and timing is everything. And, yeah, and I'm surprised button. we're getting this game so soon after Origins, right? Like, it was such a That's smart... That's not what's supposed to happen. They, didn't they in, uh, increase their development time? To uh, two years. Two for years. Every That's the thing. Yeah, it's like it works so well with Origins taking a year off. Like everyone was burnt out in Assassin's Creed, me included, and I really liked those games before. It was just too much. Then Origins came out. It was a really cool setting. Like the combat system was way different. Awesome game. Really enjoyed it. But we needed another one like a year after. I love Ancient Greece. Like I think that'll be cool. That's but... insane. That to me is like that's the one thing is an exception. Cause like I'm like oh man. Ancient we... Greece will be dope. Yeah, hundred percent. Like probably the one that I want the most out of all of them. Fighting in the Colosseum and stuff like that is going to be so freaking yeah. cool. Yeah. It, it'll be so much stuff you could do with that, you know? Hey, you got to wonder how, how many more of these games they can make. You know, these historic past places and events, they've almost hit all of them. And it seems like at some point in time, they're going to have to jump the shark, go to the future, go Feudal to Feudal Japan is like the one left that everyone wants, really. That's Ooh, the one that everyone would, wants, that which would be, be awesome. Better. Like, they need, they should just do that, like, already. Yeah. They, they should do yeah. that, but... Yeah. Yeah. That might be one of the better worlds they can do. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel I, like at this point, there's so many things that have already... You know, these worlds have been visited through the Animus. I feel like uh, at some point, they're going to have to jump the shark, and there'll be Sharknado... Uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, and I'm sure this game will be great, but let's not get back into the yearly release schedule again, please. Like, let's take two years again. You know, I would prefer yeah. that. Every two years would be yeah. way better. But, but, personally. But, Robbie, yeah. it, this game could have been in development uh, before Origins. Oh, for sure. I'm bet it, I bet it was. So, yeah, I mean, 100%. we get a, a Call of Duty every year, but they're on three-year cycles. Yeah. So it's a, a game that's that's been cultivated over time, and they could be doing this. They could have two studios working on these games. True, but there be. is... Uh, there is such thing as too much of a good thing as well so but they're they're new I don't engine, believe though. that every single night i sleep with the same oh come on beastly <laughs> well with, well, with the engine mm -hmm. that they're using now like i wouldn't doubt that like it's it's a lot easier to develop for that engine the way they they made that other game i feel like maybe that's why i can increase the you know it'll, it'll speed up the time of them creating it so we'll we'll see you know it might be all for nothing maybe someone made that with a 3d printer and no one knows so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that be? Hmm. Oh man! So this ex this news is actually pretty exciting to me because I actually bonded uh, with somebody really cool over this game, and if this news is true, which it might be, because I'm thinking the new Borderlands is right around the corner, right? And maybe maybe they were using the new engine and seeing what they could do with potentially an older game. But the news is, Borderlands One may be getting a remastered version for PS4, Xbox One, and PC soon, as the Game of the Year edition has been listed. For those platforms via the Korean Game Recordings Board. Awesome news. Yeah. It has to be very, very different from the original, though, to be appealing. So, uh, you know, the original Borderlands engine, it, it looked great for its time. But, you know, looking at something like that now, it would have to be substantially different as far as the visual aesthetic. It would have to fall in line with a similar style, but it would have to be much cleaner, much more detailed. Uh, for people to really want to delve back into that. But if it's true, and, and possibly they're using the, the engine from the new Borderlands game and, and, and just going back to clean up that extra money by re-releasing Borderlands 1 in like a Game of the Year form with a new engine, I'm all for that. That would be great news. You guys remember Borderlands 1? Yeah, Borderlands 1 is a great game, and I think it's yeah. kind of overshadowed by 2, but I think Borderlands 1 still feels different enough from 2, whereas I like playing them both and going back every now and then, so... Yeah, count me in. Remaster for this would be awesome, and we, we should definitely play this in co-op, too. That would be, that how would much, be fun. Yeah. How much would you be willing to pay for it? $29. Yeah, you think I'd say I agree. $30, $30 at the most. Yeah. 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 That's, why, that's what I'm thinking, too. I think $60 is not it's a no-buy for no, me. You no, know? wouldn't do that. So. Uh, yeah. Unless they add new modes and stuff, and... and, and do a lot of new multiplayer stuff, you know. Especially because uh, on Steam, you can buy the game that you're edition with every DLC for 10 bucks. Like, like they can't do 30 in. or like 60. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're always trying to get. You gotta get that yeah. money, man. That's what this DLC and shit is all about. Bring my, my money. This news is pretty exciting to me. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the game, this might actually make me. Ah, uh, here the, we go. The potential, <laughs> the potential of moving around the house. And enjoying this this kind of gameplay, Fortnite will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, according to the Korean Games Rating Board, uh, and it has of course a link there. That I don't want to go through all those numbers and dots for you, but this is actually earth-shattering news for Nintendo fans, people who own the Switch and have been waiting for a substantial 
multiplayer offerings. Of course, Fortnite is a free-to-play game. Uh, at least the Battle Royale mode is. So yep. it'll be a game that comes out as a free yeah. offering for the Switch. And it's the biggest Battle Royale game in the world right now by, by a mile. And I think that would really shake up the foundation of what's going on with the Switch because people don't look to it for its online infrastructure and right. its online gaming. And this could potentially be the paradigm shift that allows people to see what the Switch is actually capable of once Nintendo gets mm. 1998 technology integrated into the Nintendo Switches. Right? What's with that? Why are they so behind I mean, every time? I don't know. <laughs> well, I have it, no yeah. idea. It, I mean, it wouldn't be free, right? Because uh, the Nintendo... We have to pay for Nintendo Online still, right? You, right. Would that be the catch? Or? I, I, I don't know. See, uh, PlayStation and Xbox, they have uh, uh, redone their rules yeah. where, where games that are free to play online... i got to find that phone. It's like haunting me. Where are <laughs> PC, um, pay attention. Keep on it. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but Nintendo... Come on, snap out. They, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> The Samsung Galaxy S9. Um, Ignore it. But if Nintendo were to in integrate something similar to what's going on with PlayStation and with Xbox, uh, then it would be a free game, and it could, could potentially be free to play. Mm. Oh, my God. Please <laughs> put it on Do Not Disturb. I got to go over there and get it. Jeez. You guys keep talking. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, but yeah, Fortnite is the biggest game in the world. This makes so much sense. And this would be big because being able to take Fortnite with you, even though, you know, it's on mobile. But that is huge for Nintendo. I don't know. I don't play I Fortnite, really. Do you, Hector? Are you into Fortnite at all? I like playing Fortnite on PC, though. Like, I feel mm. that PC and console are two different things completely for Fortnite. Because Fortnite on PC is definitely so much easier. Especially like, quick building. To build. Way yeah, you easier, could build yeah. so quickly. Really? I haven't tried it on PC. Oh, because better. Because the thing yeah. is, you 100%. you know how like you could just fling your your mouse around and rotate. You could rotate, and while you're pressing a button key to 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 drop things to flip, and like you'll just build things. As opposed to um, console, you turn have to rotate, analog, you have to yeah. turn analog to build, and yeah. you're usually building <clears throat> section by section. With PC, you could build like a whole trap. You should see people when they do their traps. They could do a full trap in like five seconds. So like they do the whole thing and, and they build a trap and everything and they're out within yep. five to seven seconds. Like that's how quickly you can do in a PC where a console will probably be 15 seconds, Oops. maybe a little bit less, slightly oh, less. Well, thanks, but like, Scott, you, you convinced me not to try on PC. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cause you like that's, that's the whole thing. But then there's also now people, the mobile game and um, I haven't played a mobile. I think is that not only for iPhone uh, or is it, it's not Android, right? For Fortnite, Android right? is coming out. During Android's this coming yeah. out, yeah, this summer, I believe they said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so iPhone, I see people do it. First of all, that runs way better than PUBG. Yeah, on, it does. On, on, I've heard it does. It yeah. Good and it works well. So I'm, I'm sure the Switch is gonna be better than that. Um, how much better? I don't know, but it, it should be better than that. And the, the fact that you have normal buttons and stuff, it's good. So I mean, that's a good thing. I just don't know how well it's going to work on the go you know what i mean that's the thing like is, yeah. is the switch you can't play it on the go unless you have a hotspot that's you know? the thing you need a mobile hotspot like whereas a phone you actually legit can play it on the go so i'm like man like i don't know how well like which one's easier is it gonna be easier just to download on your phone and just get like if someone really wants to play you could just get an attachment to your phone for buttons is yeah. it wouldn't it be easier or a controller than, like, too, the switch possibly yeah because you have to, you have to be Wi-Fi. If you're Wi-Fi, why are you playing on the Switch? Would you just be in your dock mode? Wouldn't that be easier than playing on the go? I, I mean, I don't know. Switch is also a bigger screen though, as well. So there is that, like portably, yeah. than a phone usually. So yeah, and there's also so that's that. the one of the same resolution. Phones resolution is definitely higher, but yeah. Um, so have, it, I mean, Switch is definitely more convenient, screen. more convenient without doubt. It'll attract more people because it has a a big audience already. So, like, I mean, I think it's a great thing. More games to the system that can't be bad, you know what I mean? Like, that's just the way it works. More games are better. I just don't know. We don't know what their multi, their online's going to be like when it comes out. I, that's the thing I'm still wondering. Is it going yeah. to be sketchy? Is yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Sketchy? You and know? You have to tether it to your phone because that's the only way you yeah. can talk on this phone. Oh, God, that's so bad when it goes in the phone and then to the headset. That's so bad. It doesn't so make any bad. sense. If you have to use God. your phone to talk to people through the game, why not just call them? Yeah, I... <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. And like the thing is, I don't understand 
Are you gonna have to type in a ridiculous code for friend code? Like, how's it gonna work? Oh they, God, digit? let's not do that did again. They that yeah. It's our twenty-one digit friend code or something. Like, what do you have to do to play with stuff? Like, like mm. <laughs> Nintendo sometimes. I mean, with the Switch, of course, things turn around because the Wii U is a, a catastrophe. But yeah. sometimes they can be their own worst enemy, their own worst critic, because they do things that are uh, counterproductive to the ease of gaming. People like the ease of access. You like to be able to. Play your PlayStation or play your PC, you know, turn on Discord or just go to the PC, the PlayStation and create a group chat and be able to talk to people and play different games than them and be able to speak to them. That kind of stuff seems like technology that doesn't exist in Japan. It's like mm, they, they don't yeah. want that ease. They say, you want to talk to your friend? Okay, 27 digits. And all of a sudden, you know, then you got to call them and hook up an application. It's just kind of crazy. Hopefully they're seeing because the yeah. Switch is really a big win for them. They gotta make this thing as easy as possible. Good. Yeah, they gotta get their online together. You said sometimes they do that. Um Nintendo sixty four, we got a cartridge while everyone else moved the disc. Okay, uh Gabe Hugh, we got a we small got these weird ass small, small disc. tiny discs. Uh, yeah. Let, let's go to a Wii. Let's just wiggle something around the whole time on the screen. <laughs> go wiggle my thing there. around, let's you know? Go, let's go to yeah. Wii U. Let's get a second screen for no freaking reason that we'll never use <laughs> at all. <laughs> the 3ds but, had a second screen that was really pointless. Yes, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Um, yeah. yeah, so they, they convolute their their message. They want they want to innovate. You know, Nintendo yeah. they were the biggest innovators when it came to came to control. <clears throat> I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Rob. It looked like you had you have a thought. Now I want you to share. It. Oh no no no! Go ahead. Sorry, I was just thinking. Uh, it looked like you were thinking about something serious. Like, what? Oh <laughs> <laughs> no no um, sorry. Okay, Porn. Then, that's all. That's on my mind. You know. I'm sorry, sixteen and all. Uh, okay, so yeah. Nintendo, they came out with the first analog controller, right? They are one of the first home consoles to have motion controls. Mm -hmm. They were the first home console to have a controller with a touch screen. They innovate in the control scheme. And, and with the Switch, it's truly innovative because of the different ways you can play. Motion controls, the, the rumble pack, the HD rumble, they innovate in that way. But they're trying to innovate in other ways. And so far, it's been a fail and, and virtually every other way first company to use cardboard with their, their own game hey hey you know it's they creative look out behind their factory and they're like what are we doing all this cardboard shit how do we reuse this yeah yeah we gotta figure out a way draw, draw some shit on it hurry up <laughs> Make the, shape. There, the, the one thing that they try to do so much is, is to separate themselves from the other consoles which is supposed to be a good thing but i think that kind of hurt them as well when you separate yourself mm. too much it's like you make people decide, do I go here to develop or do I go there? Right. You know, I think when you separate way too much, that's what makes it harder. I think the Switch is leaning more towards getting closer to the other consoles. So it didn't make it as hard for them to, to say, okay, I want to do this. You know, it wasn't focused all on motion control. It wasn't focused on everything. I think that's why you're giving someone an opportunity to develop for you. It may not be the best resolution, but at least... It, it, like they can develop for you. And I think that's the difference between this and the Wii U. You know, you mm -hmm. just made it so impossible. Yeah. It's like you you give, you give made them have a choice. And you what do you think is going to happen? You have two consoles that are almost the same in the way they're designed, you know. Um, Ease of access. Yeah. yeah. And then you have one that's not. Of course, you're going to, if you're going to waste your years of development and take a chance, you're going to take a chance on the one that has more people. Mm -hmm. like and, I, more, and more power and right. more yeah. ease of access yeah. and uh, you know, easier UI, easier system to create on. The X, yeah. uh, X86 architecture is so much easier than what was going on with the Wii U. Exactly. So yeah, hopefully yeah. they've learned some serious lessons and uh, the Switch will win the day. It's going to be between the Switch and the PS4, for sure. The, mm. Switch is, the Switch is like on a serious incline right now, just selling continually. Yeah, Nintendo's yeah. really punched back. They've really, really, really kicked it up this generation. They just need to get that online together and they'll be good to go. Because they're getting third-party support now, which is amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, huge for them. I want to see Wolfenstein too on, on but this. Yeah, I still say cool. they need more new games. Like, I, I think they, they need more newer games that are coming. Like, they gotta get more, because they keep porting a lot. Less ports. Which is fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, I, there's way too many ports at the moment. I mean, it's good to bring games, but, like, you better... Older games, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. gotta start focusing on, like, this is... We're gonna get this game, this game, like, the ones that people want. And then, because, like, all these Pokemon games are great and stuff, but they're not... They're just smaller games. I feel like, I don't know, the, you saw the three, three, the Pokemons and stuff like that. Like, that, that to me, I'm, like, I'm waiting to see what what's gonna be there. Like, hopefully one of them is, like, a really good traditional Pokemon stuff. One is, like, based off almost, like, Pokemon yeah. Go, so I... I'm kind of curious what it could be like, but they announced like three you, of them. So. 
Do you think, not too nerdy, that the issue could be that porting newer games, the, the, the hardware is not capable of running them, do you think? I mean, because, of course, if the Switch was able to run, like, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Origins, it would have got it. But if I think if games like that were to be ported, it would be ported and degraded to such a point where people would look at it and say, ah, this is a Switch version of the game. I think they're just trying to be wise about the games that they're porting. I think they're really pushing the envelope uh, with games like, of course, Wolfenstein, Doom. People would have never expected that to be able to run on a tablet the way that it's running. See, yeah. Some of the newer stuff, I feel like it could really create a big gap for, for gamers. Like if you see it on PlayStation and you see it on yeah. the Switch and you see such a huge disparity as far as the graphical quality, that could kind of leave a negative connotation with the Switch and make people kind of say, ah, it's a secondary version. I think they're just picking the games that they can uh, port and they right. could be, you know, they could stand alongside their their competition and people would say, well, I didn't know that was on the Switch. Oh, yeah. I could tell it's something a little off, but I can't tell that much. I think they're just being wise about that, at least until they come out with a new model, a new SKU for the Switch. You know they're going to do that. There have been 700 different 3DSs. Exactly. You know and the thing is, too, with the, the Switch, obviously, like third-party support, the only stru difficulty that they really have is just the hardware is not the most powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's tough to port games to it. Like I'm sure eventually, like two or three years, we'll see a new Switch that's more powerful yep. and stuff, and they can and come out with possibly a dock that adds more power yeah. to something like that. But yeah, um, the only real concern of third-party support is if just they have enough power that it's not too difficult to port stuff. Let me ask you guys a question. It's kind of a, a side uh, quest for mm -hmm. this topic. What what game, like if you could choose any game besides something that's an exclusive to Sony or Microsoft, what game would you like to see Swi uh, Switch get a port of or get a version of? What do you think would kind of make that leap and really get people excited if they came to the Switch? Black Ops 4, I think, would be cool on Switch. That would oh, be really cool. Be able to take that on the go. 60 frames per second, too, if they could get that. That would be really that's cool. That's not happening. I know, but that's like, just, that's just pipe like dream. Black Ops but... 1. <laughs> yeah, Black Ops 1. It looks like Modern Warfare 2. Oh, uh, but yeah, I, I think that Nintendo has, they've had a, a good relationship with Activision. Not the best, but, mm. you know, on the Wii U, it was Black Ops 2. Right, and uh, Ghosts. And, and so, yeah. yeah, and Ghosts. So, I mean, I'm thinking that there's a good possibility they could port something to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, imagine. I mean, even if it was an older game, what if they ported Black Ops Two, like a remastered version with like some extra maps or something, just to the Switch? I'd play that. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to take that kind of stuff on the go. And I'm not saying it's not possible to, to port the new Black Ops. Maybe it is, but you know, as far as what we've seen so far, that might be a little hard. For the Switch to yeah, play. the only worrying thing is like 60 frames per second. Like Call of Duty's known for how that smooth is it is. Duty. That's the worrying thing about if they ported it to Switch. Like, would it was be able Wii to run consistently? Was the Wii U able to do that? Yes, it was. 60? Oh, well, the yeah. Switch can. But, well, what's, we, but that's a total generational difference, too, because Black Ops 2 is last gen, whereas Black Ops 4 is current gen. So, yeah. What scared me, though, the most, like, I mean, here's the thing, right? Doom, like, played decently on the Switch, right? But if you look right. at it, it, what, it dropped. It dipped pretty low. It wasn't even a solid 30 frames per second. It, like, dipped, like, back and forth. And, like... The thing is this, right? Doom was smooth, like buttery smooth for every console, PC, like every device is really smooth. And that they're really good. I think that was one of the best, like the way they created a game and how great it was and smooth it ran everywhere. That yeah. was one of the best ones. And it's still like the Switch didn't seem like it handled as much. And I know it's not that big. It handled enough to play, right? Mm -hmm. But it and played it wasn't... well though, Hector. It yeah. played it really well. well that's what I'm it, saying. It wasn't, like, it wasn't as, as, as seamless as the PS4 or the PC. Yeah. But, it, but for a person playing on a portable on that screen, yeah. it, it, that was, you know, apples and oranges, in my opinion. Yeah. But that, that's what apples I'm saying, though. Know, like, that's like someone that was oh, developed God. the best they could develop. Like, that's a developer knows how to develop for them. That's what I'm saying. That's at its best. That's what I'm kind of wondering, like, what's other games going to be like when they start getting more advanced? Because... Those, those are people that know how to develop. You know, those yeah. are people that know how to smooth out games. And that's why I'm saying that it had its dips, but it still was good on the go. Like, it was good enough for the Switch. But that's my point. Like, that was someone that knew what they are doing. I'm kind of question like other games like because not every developer Smaller does development teams. Yeah, yeah developers don't do it like like they do you know they but they know their stuff how to make sure it's smooth and stuff like that so that's but why you, another thing to consider though the nintendo switch is much bigger than anyone anticipated there were huge yeah. development teams out there before the switch dropped saying i'm not going to support this thing nintendo's dream i don't think it's going to go anywhere i think this is going to be worse than the wii u oh my goodness you couldn't have been more wrong 
So everybody has done a 180 and they're jumped on the Nintendo Switch train. And when people jump on and money starts to, you know, to, to power this juggernaut, this console, new development practices form. Mm-hmm. And people who created games like Doom, they learn little tricks and they learn the do's and the don'ts when it comes to developing on a particularly unique system. Yeah. And of course, the Tegra X chip is something we all know about. It's a mobile chip. But when you're developing like a console quality game on it, I'm sure at this point they've learned some shortcuts and things that you can and you can't do on it. And of course, that's going to get passed around the industry, making the development much easier. Like, look at Skyrim on the Switch. I have that too. It unbelievable it's unbelievable that they were able to accomplish that so i mean i think it's it's capable i don't think we've seen the the limits of what the switch can do i really do believe that uh like when games like fortnite come out and some of these other games that are going to get uh announced this year when we see them our mind like when we first heard doom you know 2016's doom is coming to switch my mind that was was huge it was like a, a chimpanzee in a rocket ship i couldn't understand how to drive it I couldn't understand how this could possibly be. Yeah, and Wolfenstein 2. I was like, holy shit. I can't believe this is happening. Have you seen the way that looks on the Switch? So, I mean, I think that we're going to see more and more. uh, And I think we're going to see better stuff as time progresses. And I think it'll be an exciting time to be a Nintendo user. Do you guys, you guys know Nintendo's modus operandi. They always release something new. Mm -hmm. The Switch came out, I want to say, what was it? Was it 2017? March 2017. Yep. Mm -hmm. A little over a year. When do you think we'll see a revision? 2019? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I, so. They, That's good timing. Maybe I hope, you know, next year. I hope they put a little... This would be a pretty cool idea for them. They put like a little slot so you can put a SIM card in there so you can just Ooh. take it out of your phone. You can take it out of your phone or put it in there and you can use it as both a phone and a device when you want to and then put it right back to your phone if you don't need it. Yeah. I'm just saying, though, that that would be pretty cool. <laughs> oh, that would yeah. be. Uh, you would be a big-ass target on the subway, though. Hey, what's going on, baby? And the guy by the door, as soon as the door gets ready to close, snap, you see Hector jumped up. My switch! Well, I mean, you can have, you know, Bluetooth is Bluetooth, so you can have a Bluetooth yeah. headphone. You know, and you uh, can no, talk like the, that. The switch, the switch isn't Bluetooth. Now I'm saying that's what they need mm. to add, the Bluetooth yeah. on there, yeah. and just go like that, boom, and that's it, and you're good to go. Super the Bluetooth 5.0? Come on, man, dude. That's it. Oh, you, I just you know it. how Nintendo is with you know this super new technology, Bluetooth. This hard to spell, so you know they're not going to have that Bluetooth and online connectivity and infrastructure. Come on, you got to wait till 2035 for that shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up, can I add something real quick, Beasley? Sure. Just because uh, we had a really good question in the chat, and I kind of want to make this a topic. Kike23 in the chat said, uh, "What are your guys' most anticipated?" Games of E3, and what are you really looking forward to? And he personally also said Microsoft could really go big at this E3. What are you guys looking forward to the most at E3? Well, I'll just say this. Microsoft is either going to go big or they're going to go all the way home. Um, Right. I'm excited for Square. I want to see what's going on with Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII is going to be a big deal. Also, of course, have to know what's going on with uh, The Last of Us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. those, Those are really exciting games to look at. Not the biggest Spider-Man fan, but the game looks like you're playing a movie. Finally, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Let's see what that's all about. That's just too much stuff to you know to, to jot down. But for me, probably the news that I want the most is Final Fantasy VII. That's for me personally. That game's coming out 2022. No, it's not. Right. Yes, it is, Beastly. We're not going to do that. Quit denying it. It's, that game's nowhere near close. Stop no, it. Stop the crazy true. theories. No, nope, it's, it's not. not it's not happening. It, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's like five years from now. <laughs> I saw a tear just come down. I'm so sorry, Beastly. Uh, but yeah, Hector, what are you looking forward to the most of E3? Just that we know that's announced for the most part. Uh, okay. For announcement? Well, the thing, I'm more excited about unannounced things. I'm hoping yeah. for something like, but of course, like, I, I'm excited to see what Microsoft has to bring to the table. Because I know they. this is like... This is it, right? I feel like this is like the big moment this for them. Is that this is the them. last yes. chance. So like, I feel like they're gonna have to come out with like a knockout punch, a big game that no one thought they'll get. Maybe they purchase someone, a developer, you know, a studio that no one thought they would. Yeah. I feel like they're gonna come out swinging on this one. Um, like it's like one of those, you know, like it's like you're watching like a boxing match or MMA fight, right? And like this person, the last round, they're losing. They lost every round, and like this is it. Now all of a sudden they gotta come out, they gotta come out swinging and hope that they get one knockout punch and that's it. I feel like that's what Microsoft is at. They're at that point where 
it's not that they're going to do bad this this whole uh, generation. It's just that they're not going to do as well as Sony ever if they don't find a way to do it. And I don't think they're going to surpass mm-hmm. Sony anyway, but at least they to stay competitive, they have to do something that's just going to be a knockout punch. And I feel like I'm kind of yeah. excited to see what they're going to do. Like, are so, they really so going to do something different? You're saying that they that fear is set in. They're in a kind of a rabbit moment in gaming history where they know yeah. they have to do something now. Yeah. This is this is the the, the final countdown. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So they know do, do, do. if they if they months in this deal and uh, people ask me why do you say months in this from an old movie called Kingpin and if you watch it you understand. But they if they screw up this deal, basically you're saying that this this console generation, Microsoft is bowing out if they don't come with something very powerful mm. and meaningful. See, I I don't I don't think they're about this. Is, here's the thing, right? Like companies don't just look for winning this generation, right? It has to be something very popular. Like they want to be as popular as possible because they become a brand name, right? So back in the day, anytime said like, oh, you got that new Nintendo. Everything was Nintendo, whether you had Sega or whatever it was. Right. People uh, thought of video games and they said Nintendo. Nintendo. And like there's a point in time there was PlayStation. Oh, you got a PlayStation, right? People said that. And then now people were saying Xbox for a while, the Xbox 360. People will assume, oh, you got an Xbox. Like they will say Xbox as if you're playing video games. But now Sony is going back to taking that name where everyone associates PlayStation, PlayStation with video yeah. games. Right. And I think that that means more to a company than just sales right now because if everything the in your mind is, okay. yeah, it's Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. When you see Xbox, you're going to go out there and buy Xbox. And that's what they, that's what their mind is, is saying. Never thought and with, about that way. Wow. Yeah, yeah, without brand that, recognition. Yeah. That, that hurts more to a company than just the losing the generation because then you know the next generation, the other team has the head start because everyone's gonna be having PlayStation on their mind. On the mind. On the and that's the, that's the problem. Like you can't have that because that means that even if you release something new, it doesn't matter because on people's minds is that. And there's that's the thing with parents. A lot of parents have little kids and they don't really they don't realize that they just know one thing. Oh, he'll like video games. Oh, uh, PlayStation. They'll give it to them. They don't realize if it's uh, Xbox or PlayStation. They just know that the popular thing is the PlayStation. PlayStation. And right. I think that's that that's what hurts companies the, the most. And I share. think they want that. Yeah. They want Exactly. I think that's what they're going to do. And it's like how even uh, Bungie and Activision, how they have exclusivity with Destiny for PlayStation. They want you to associate that with PS4 because it's the brand recognition. Like, Sony wants you to buy that game on their platform. They want the brand recognition of Destiny and tons of other games, too. And Microsoft does that as well. But, yeah, no, it's important. I kind of hit on this last week, but again, I want to ask. If if you were in control of Microsoft, this is for both of you guys. If you were in control and you've seen the last four years... And you know what Microsoft has gone down the path of creating more powerful hardware, uh, losing some uh, exclusives, having issues with you know developing exclusives and getting them out in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. What would be your prime objective this E3 to convey to to the consumer? What would be the number one thing you want the gamers watching E3 to understand and walk away with? We're dedicated to games. That's important. Yeah. Always. I've heard that. I've heard that slogan. I've even heard him say the best place to play, which might be true, might be like if you're looking at third-party games. But do you think that what do you what do you do to convey that message to the people who are watching? This? Uh, you got to bring it with first parties. I think either they yeah got to buy studios, which is a good idea, and like no more timed exclusives, no more Rise of the Tomb Raider. I think they need actual studios to buy that those games stay exclusive and are exclusive. Uh, they need to just double down and say, we have games that no one else has. We have all these great games. Uh, you can play third party as well. And you can play them with your friends. You have a great uh, service with Xbox Live, things like that. We have Game Pass. So Xbox is going beyond would just you cons- would you continue the game system. Would you continue to play anywhere initiative? Uh, you mean between late. Xbox and PC? You so think they have to, yeah. No, I, I would because it's future proofing. As yeah. much as it seems like it's kind of a weird idea, but I get it. Personally. It's too late to take that back, I mean. Like, yeah. if you say something that you now you're gonna take away the the you know consumer friendliness, you can't do that at this point. But right. the one thing for them that I think they have to say is like the you know like when they have the the lead controller, right? They yeah. they mention how much money they invested in that. They told people we did this much money to invest in this. 
why don't you tell people we're investing all this money on these studios to give you new games? Let people know that this is what you're doing yeah, enough to get hardware. You new games. Yeah. You know, we want to hear that you're actually spending money to then get people to develop games. And you want to have single player, multiplayer experiences no matter who you are, what you play, you're welcome here on Xbox. Don't say this whole multiplayer crap that, oh, you're going to have, you want Halo and uh, you want Gears, you come here. No, because the people that don't mm -hmm. like multiplayer feel like they can't go on Xbox. That's why I feel like if you don't like shooters, you don't like sports, there's no need to play on Xbox. And I feel like well, that you don't want that. Like you want people to associate Xbox as any style that you play, any game that you play, you're welcome to play here. And I think true. that's yeah. the mentality. They should do it so that it becomes like a universal console that whatever you want, you get here. And I think they have to portray that. They have to say it that way. And they're gonna need something that's gonna spark the reaction people a huge price cut. They're gonna need something that's Ooh, gonna be really? like they're gonna entice you mm -hmm. to come over to them and you show them. You think the, 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 yeah. the base console, or are you talking about the X? What, what, I'm what, thinking what? both. I think they're gonna have to drop both. They're gonna really? say, "Come on over. The water's nice." You guys can swim too, or whatever. You know, that's <laughs> it. Hopefully, <laughs> well, they say just they that. Get <laughs> come over and swim with us. They're they're gonna they're Coming gonna do something and like I they're gonna have to do something like that and they're gonna have to let people know that it's nice, and and that's it and they're, they're gonna have to explain to people that video games are going to be a thing on the Xbox because if they don't mm -hmm. do that that's Third it. Third parties people, are not enough. Yeah. Yeah. They're no, tired of all this console upgrade or this update up. Like who cares about the update? Like. And, and this is the last thing I'll, I'll ask about this because I, I love picking you guys' brains about this. They, yeah, it's fun. You know what? Yeah. Phil Spencer needs to listen to you guys. Phil Big Swing and Dick Spencer. That's yeah. his name. So let me, let me, I, I don't know about his You've never heard that one? Either. No, but here. Oh, here. come on. It's a great name. <laughs> so sit under Phil Sp hey. Big Swing and Dick Spencer. Uh, we've He's had, the man, all right? We've had the Pro Controller. Phil's the dude. Is, which is better hardware. We've had the Xbox One S, which is refined hardware slightly improved over the original VCR Xbox I have over there. And then we've had the yeah. Xbox One S, which is refined hardware, uh, resized, very you know articulated and beautiful. It's been about hardware under Phil Spencer. Do you believe that he's gotten the message that hardware is not the place to go for the Xbox? Yeah, and I think it also... It has to the, be him. He's, he's the tip of the spear. He's the he big, swing be, di big swing and dick, right? Yeah. Yeah. As we pointed out. Uh, and so it has to be him that understands this. You know, I think a lot of consumers, you know, especially Xbox fans of many, many years are looking at the Xbox saying, I need games. Mm -hmm. I need something that I can't play anywhere. But it seems like up until this point, and maybe this E3 will be the, the paradigm shift. Up until this point, Microsoft has been focused on giving you the best hardware to play your games on and not giving you exclusivity, games that are meaningful games that are so different that you can't play anything like this anywhere else. And, uh, you know, Phil Spencer's a great guy. He turned everything around from Don the Disaster, the big swing in Disaster Matrix. Uh, and I'm thinking that at, at some point he's got to get the picture. Do you guys think now is the time? 100% now is the time. And especially because the X is out of the way. Like, last year's E3 was obviously them promoting mm -hmm. the X and showing all these games in 4K and, like, here's Anthem, here's Forza, here's... Xbox One stuff. game. I mean, Xbox Original game. Yeah, they did it for the X. Like, they wanted to showcase their new console. Now, that's out of the way, you know? This year, they can just, just focus on games, which is, like, any games coming up. So, I think, yeah, I think the time is now, See, and I think they're going to capitalize on that. Hopefully, they I, do. I think the problem is this, right? They, they looked at Sony, and they realized that Sony had a powerful console coming out. But they didn't look at the second part. While Sony did that, they were actually producing and developing games. these games. Yeah, they're making to their games yeah. for their console. You know, it, to tell to to you know to make it look as best as they can on their console. And I think that's what Sony did. They they wanted to make the best console they can make at an affordable price. And mm -hmm. that's in a price that they wouldn't lose money on because originally it wasn't losing money. And like, that's the thing. They, they try to make it so they wouldn't lose money on the console. And yet it's the most powerful it could be. And mm -hmm. I think Microsoft didn't pay attention to the key factor that they're developing games for that At console. Now, here's the thing. The only way I could see this, I, something else I was going to say about the um, Xbox, I feel that Microsoft might have to for the Xbox One X, they might have to start separating their games. Start giving you a better, like a game that's exclusively made 
for like, DX. Can they do that yet, that. though? Like, is it I too think soon? they're going to have to, because then that will make it a way more powerful console if they actually start focusing games on well, the Xbox. Well, I bet they will at some point, but I just don't yeah, know think, if it's too soon yet. I, I think know. that if they start announcing that and they start saying, and, and they give a price cut, for the Xbox One Ooh, X, and is... I'll give you a reason to buy the Xbox One yeah, X. Coupled with the price cut, that then, would be easier. You yeah. guys saying like, and then and start saying you can still get the experience here. We're not, we're not casting you out, but we're going to make sure that these people, the Xbox One X, they're also gonna have like maybe higher frames per second. They're gonna have higher frames per second online yeah. play, and you can play with other people on PC, like the stuff like that. They announced that this. That was really. But, what they will do, the and then yeah. that's something that it will separate them. I think if they could do that, that's the only leap that they could take. That would be a big announcement if they did that. that would be huge. Um, but besides that, I mean, they they screwed up on the part of developing games, and that could lead to your next topic, Robbie. You yeah, know, the next topic is really interesting. With, yeah, with the plethora of information we just share with you guys about Xbox continuing to win. Amazon has suddenly canceled pre-orders for Crackdown 3, leading to worries that the game will again be delayed to yeah. 2019. Yikes. Yeah, Robbie, yeah, that face needs to be a gift, what you just did. Uh, this is something <laughs> that Xbox fans have kind of become, they've become wary of and kind of used to. Games that have been touted and talked about for very long times, uh, consistently being pushed back and, and some even being indefinitely delayed canceled i mean um when the hell was crackdown 3 announced wasn't it e3 2013 like when the xbox one was yeah Yeah. god that's a long time ago that's five years i I, I don't know maybe they've been waiting for the clouds to come over over the top the game is supposedly powered by the cloud that's how they're doing their destruction and stuff maybe they blew the wrong direction they're waiting for this like shit it's gonna come back back. yeah yeah Uh, (laughs) this is really bad news and i understand uh you know i know a lot of people probably watching the podcast or listening to us now are, are exclusively Xbox fans. Uh, and to hear this, is, it kind of grinds your gears. It would make me really upset with the way that they're they're managing their development studios. This should not happen. Not after so many years. You know, waiting for four and a half or five years after an announcement uh, and, and consistently having issues like this is just unacceptable. And it's even more worrying, too, because I remember, like, it was either E3 last year or was Gamescom or something, like, a lot of the press played Crackdown 3, and they said it was in rough shape, like, after it's been in development for a long time. Really? That's yeah, worrying. Yeah. That's worrying to me, you know? The fact that they delayed it again, and honestly, I'm gonna say it now, if they delay this game again, I feel like this game is being cancelled. I don't know how much longer they can just develop it and not release it in, if it's in rough yeah, shape still. Maybe Mark Cerny can go work over there and make it worse. That's, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Crackdown, like this game's supposed to get canceled, this, though. Right? This is this is a this is a part three of a game. Okay, the, what's even more concerning is not like it's a first time like game or anything. This is a part three of a game. Like so you, the idea is a redesign. It's not the idea. You're not recreating the whole idea. Yeah. Maybe it's go it's gonna look different and everything, but still, it's still the based off the there. first two. Yeah. So like, it's mm. not you're completely have to do everything over and it's just kind of scary that they cannot get that done at all and it looks such a rough shape i think it was a matter of like they didn't know what to create and i think they start changing the design as they went on and like that's scary if you don't know exactly what you want and the outcome of the game and like they keep changing because like you're right robbie i heard that too like when they people played it already like they said that it was really in rough shape Exactly. That was and years after the development. That was that was last, last year. E3. Yeah, that was last E3. Is uh, I remember people actually they had it playable. I believe on there like a, a small demo for like um other other people. I think it was only media that got that right. Yeah, like it was a press it, thing. It, it's a only media got a chance to, to play like a, a small little demo or section of it, and it, they're saying the same thing. It looked like in rough shape. And if you look, you remember the trailers and stuff. I mean, the trailers look kind of weird. It did not look great at all. Yeah. To me. It didn't look like a like a new AAA. next generation. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked kind of rough. Even when they I showed it at E3 last year, the trailer, I was like, this, I don't know. Like, you know, it's, yeah. It's, it looked questionable to me in general. Uh, it's just, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's, to me, for part three, though, it's just like, what are they... What are they thinking? Like, what games are Their ambitions are, they are way too big for, for uh, the, the production. Or they just, like you said, went in there. They have the foundation, probably have the the engine up and running, but they probably are changing uh, dynamics of the story. 
and, and just doing things haphazardly, which is causing huge delays. See, mm-hmm. jokes and- aside, what do you guys know? I honestly, sincerely don't even know what is besides Crackdown Three. What other game that's exclusively exclusively to Microsoft are we waiting for? I, I'm like confused. I'm at a loss. What? We were waiting for that Dragon game, but it got it got a uh, scale bound. And that's what I meant. Like yeah. now, like once it or not cancel. What? Like Let's sincerely, go to the is, Googles and see. I'm not even sure. Like, and that's bad. In my mind, I can't even think of one game that's coming out exclusively for them. Like, at all. I, no, I don't think there is, really. I, I think Gears 5 and Halo 6 are obvious, but those have to be announced. Like, those aren't even announced yet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. those are besides... That's the all they core, have. So, so I'm like, looking now, and the only thing I'm seeing is, uh, of course, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game called Strange Brigade, Vampire... Jurassic World, and these are all third parties. Yeah, no excuses. Yeah. <laughs> DJ says Microsoft and will and announce they're uncanceling Scalebound. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh man. I, I'd be scared of that at this point, Robbie. You know, it, a lot of things have gone bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, was it? Wait, wasn't Platinum working with them on that? Yes. Yeah, so were. I mean, Platinum knows what they're doing, so maybe they could have fixed something. But near Automata, I mean, look at that. Look at Bayonetta. They know what's going yeah. on. They know how to create these games. Oh yeah. Oh, no. You know things things go wrong every game they made teenage mutant ninja turtles was it take manhattan for playstation mm-hmm. 4 and xbox one that was a horrible game you know I, I don't know if they had their b team the varsity team working on that i don't know what's going on yeah but yeah i'm looking now there, there doesn't seem to be much in the in in the way of xbox games that people are really excited about i think people are more excited about the unknown with the xbox people are excited about the prospect we want new stuff that we don't expect. You know, show us what we want. I think it's, we got to do like, that. It's like being at home and you're in a you're a kid and you, you live in a poor neighborhood and your mom goes out to get you dinner and you don't know what she's bringing home but you're hungry so you're excited whenever she you know rings the doorbell and it could be you know a five star diner it could be something from Longhorn but she cracks open the bag and it's Taco Bell. <laughs> Can have diarrhea that night. <laughs> Digestion problems. Uh, hopefully, the, the Xbox fans don't get diarrhea. <laughs> that would be a new press. I mean, at yeah. this point, Crackhead Three will probably be a better game than Crackdown. Crackhead Three. Like, yeah, it might. Starting <laughs> Gation. <laughs> Grab a damn controller and smoke some of this crack. The game's looking kind of ashy there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my God. I mean, it, it's kind of a sad thing, but. I, like you guys have already said, this is going to be the year. It has to be. The year. Yeah, they got to show new stuff. For Microsoft, I mean, they, they really don't have anything else. They, every card is already on the table. Sony and Microsoft are winning. They All they got to do is stay consistent. And, and of course, people are stepping further and further away from Xbox. They got to bring people back. Yeah, 100%. All right, so this is uh, some news uh, for the huge Destiny fans out there. There are at least Woo. 13 of them. PC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Destiny, Destiny 2's anticipated fall expansion will be revealed this Tuesday, June 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific noon, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific noon Eastern time on twitch.tv forward slash Bungie. <gasps> oh, Briar Rabbit would probably be on that. I was just going to say, you guys are going to talk about this all day on your next oh, gaming no. podcast. Aren't you excited, Beastly? Yeah. You're so excited to talk only yeah. about this on the podcast it's later. Be all day. Yeah, that's all you're going to talk I'm, about. I'm doing Revolver Get ready. from 4 until 6. And now, now this news. This is all they're gonna talk about. <laughs> I gotta Boy, go get a caffeine the, pill. The thing is, though, like I, I thought this didn't. Some of the press already get a chance to play this. Like when, I, or no one got expansion? a chance to play this. So no, I like no. To, to try. It. No one got. So this is like a different expansion. So I'm like, I'm, I'm wondering, like I'm wondering what they could bring to it that's gonna bring people back, or they don't care about the people that left. They only care about the people who are still playing. Is it like one of those expansions? It's or probably a, a dual uh, encompassing objective there. Mm. Uh, I'm sure they want to bring, you know, some people really, really, really love Destiny and started to step away in Destiny 2 because they felt like it was a very underwhelming sequel. I'm not one of those yeah. people because I'm not super critical of the game. I just play it, you know, I mean, can't we play? We go do a few things and then we find out, hey, we're not probably going to do that shit. Then we go play something else. Some people heavily scrutinize every aspect of the game. They're constantly in forums, talking mm-hmm. to the development team, watching Twitch oh, yeah. live streams. Watching all this stuff, and, and so those people are heavily invested in it. To me, it's just not enough game there for me to stay invested. But I understand. Yeah. I understand that some people, you know, that's their life. You know, totally. I, you guys know I do a podcast with guys who that game is that's life. Yeah. You know, there's like Robbie said that Destiny news today, it's over. No need for topics. 
they lost me when they, they should have did this. They should have had cross save. If you allowed me to pick up where I left off of my character on PlayStation and go back to PC, I don't care about crossplay. Forget about crossplay. I don't care about. I just want my character. If I could grind alone on a PC for a while and then go back and play with other people that's on PS4, need. I that's really need would love to that do. too. Yeah. Like, yeah. why did they not allow that? Just they just it, more. You would have got more sales because more people would have bought it for more than one platform. The like, only I reason think, like, I can think they did that is just because PlayStation is exclusivity with exclusive. weapons. And stuff like that, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, which is a bummer. Yeah, but if that were the case, they would make, they would have made an effort to allow Xbox to do it. And you, you're, I had to buy the game three times. I had to buy it on Kate's laptop. Yeah. I bought it on this desktop, and I bought it on PS4. Yeah. And our, our PS4 characters, we got two of them, like 345, 50 light, which is kind of low now. But they were ballers at, at first. Yeah. They were like at the on the dance floor at the club, making it rain. You know, all these special rain <laughs> emotes, taking pictures and shit. <laughs> And, and and then when I buy the game on PC, it's like I'm starting all over again. I'm injured walking through this desolate wasteland, and I'm like, I don't want to do all this again. Yeah. And so I, you know, I bought it for Kate. She's yet to even go through that, and I'm like, ah, so I'm so lonely, so lonely on PC. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to do it. Anymore. It takes so long to do it. We don't. You mean to care. tell me? Like with their character on PC, Savior, it's a PS4 school. You mean to tell me that just you can't put not available? Like whatever item it is is not available. Like they lock it out for you on a PC or whatever, and you can't you can't switch it up. Like great. you have a whole lineup of weapons, you can't just switch it up. Like oh, this is only exclusive until mm -hmm. the day it's released, and now I will have it there. Like that's all it is. Like it just says not available. They definitely could have did that. They chose not to. That yeah. was the dumbest thing to yeah. me because then they, they would have got more sales. Everyone would have played it, and it's still. Uh, please, uh, you know, going by what Sony wants, and it's locked out, so no one, it's exclusive for yeah, Sony. Yeah, just gray it out. Not. Like, they don't even have to say anything You're on right. it. Just gray you it out. Yeah. It probably is Sony creating this, this wall. Exactly. But also, yeah, it probably is. It's like it's like advertising for Sony too. It, you're locking out those parts to be like, yo, if you want to use this, go on to PS4. To well, then, I don't think they'd explicitly ready, say that, but yeah, no true. It, saying, but it would be it, inferred by the player, yeah. Yeah, of you know course. What I mean? And then that's it. And then that's all you have to do. And then that, that's all you have to do. And it would have been more people playing, and they could have played the way they want to play, and that's it. Like they didn't do that. And they lost me because I kept. I was mm -hmm. tired. I didn't want to go buy the PS4 version. I went to the PC version. It was it was cool and smooth for a while, and then. I just got bored because they didn't do any changes I wanted to do. So this well, expansion, they actually, like, they actually pulled back a lot of things that were in Destiny One, yeah, like, and, and kind of you know went back in the opposite direction. That pissed off a ton of people. Yeah, were you know heavily steeped in Destiny lore and the way the game played and, and the, the different aspects of gameplay mechanics that got just completely Oops. removed. You know, the the number of people who were inside of a, a multiplayer match got changed from, from six to four. It just you know a lot of people got agitated with that. I understand it. You know, I, I think Destiny is a, a fun game. I don't think it's, you know, the, the bee's knees or the best thing since sliced bread at all. But I understand the people who really enjoy it, and I understand the passion behind it. What do we got left? Oh, does this mean we got one topic left? I got a topic I came up with. Uh, let me read it <gasps> off here real quick. Let me get this up here. I hate how Skype exits is full screen like that. It's okay. All right, so guys, I came up with a little topic this week to talk about, and uh, the topic is, do pre-E3 reveals ruin the fun of E3? Nowadays, many publishers make the decision to forego a traditional E3 announcement and announce their games ahead of schedule, weeks, or maybe even a month in advance. This begs the question, do publishers really need an E3 announcement to get the spotlight for their upcoming games, or is it just as effective to announce ahead of time and then show that game for the first time during the show? What do you guys think? It, it does take away from the experience overall. I mean, what is excitement? What is the first time? Made? I think so, yeah. Uh, you know, if, if Fallout 76 would have been bigger news at E3 than it was leaked or, or, or shown in kind of this preview type of way. It takes away from the event. It's like uh, you want to see a, mm -hmm. a good fight, and before the fight, the boxers get to punch each other three or four times just so you can get a taste of what's going to happen. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like uh, it takes away from the actual event. And you know me, I always bring it back to me in my personal life. If Kate just walked in here and you know was making breakfast or lunch and said, here, here's the nighty I'm going to wear tonight, i go, oh, that's awesome. And then she'd leave and I'd be thinking about it all night. And when she wears it, it just wouldn't be quite as magical. So for me, it should be happening at the moment of the show. It should be happening at where people are most hyped, people online watching, people are there feverishly watching. If they showed Shinmu 3 or... Final Fantasy VII or more Kingdom Hearts, which they basically show the entire damn game at this point. 
I would be, you know, less excited about the event. And that's my personal experience. Yeah, I think big E3 reveals are exciting. Like, I love that excitement, especially when we don't know what it is. Like, I love just watching a game demo for the first time or a trailer, and you don't know what the game is. It's like, what the hell is this? Like, this looks cool. Like Anthem, yeah, yeah. And then they show it. This is like, holy shit. Everyone's just, like, buzzing about it on Twitter and stuff. It's it's awesome. Like, it's such a cool thing, when, especially when it's a surprise and we don't know what it is. That's the best. Like, that's what I love about E3 the most. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with what like... Do you, what do you guys think that the, the, the leaks are all about? It's, I, mean, I don't even call it a leak. This stuff, like Hector said, is not a leak. When this GameStop keychain leaks your game. You, yeah. information. Do you tend... Yeah, what, what are you saying? What do you think about, like, does it on purpose? Are you, are of course you asking, it's on... Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you look at this, right? What is the, the purpose the, of it? The people that tend to do it or what are usually the bigger companies. Why do they do it? Because they have they probably have another announcement. Here's the thing, right? Like you, I know you guys say you both say they'll ruin the fun of it. You know what happens at a time. You remember that movie, Pastor Christ, man. Everyone knew what was gonna happen at the end of that movie before it happened. You know, <laughs> so so I'm saying like sometimes people do not yeah, care. Yeah. Why? Because when you announce something, new questions are are now in people's minds. Like, oh well, how are they gonna do this? What's gonna happen? And now it's gonna right. attract people to find out those answers to that questions that they have, and that's what the they want to do. They want you to come over there and do it. Mm. And while you're there, since most of the people that announces are bigger studios, bigger companies, they then shock you with something else that you did not expect and that's why they're throwing out one announced like fallout 76 next thing you know bam another elder scrolls or something uh, else that you don't know what's happening you know what i mean you don't know what's gonna happen can barely take it, it no more it's same thing look listening? assassin's creed you need like yeah i mean like ubisoft could just announce something else while you're there like i i feel like they do this on purpose to attract you and then bam it's it's like what, that's splinter it cell, splinter cell yeah. Uh, but for the people who don't know, because whenever I hear Nacho Nerdy speak and, and he goes into this mode and you look into his eye and you see that sparkle. This look guy, into his eyes. You get that sensation. This guy worked in one of the biggest development studios. No, 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 no. no. I'm good. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he has a, he kind of has a greater depth of the way these companies work. Because he has a, a history with working with these types of companies. And, and I would have never thought about it that way. But like when you explained it, it made perfect sense. And I was like, He's coming from a place I've never experienced, and that's why it's making so much sense. You're absolutely right. We like when we started the show talking about Fallout 76. There were tons of questions. Yeah. You know, they put out just enough information to whet your whistle, whet your appetite. You know, it's going to be a survival-based Fallout mm -hmm. game, and you're like, what does that even mean, right? Am I going to be looking for Nuka Cola and drinking them? Are there going to be radiated monsters and dogs mm -hmm. everywhere? Are there going to be people? So yeah. now there's a ton of questions. They yeah. built all this excitement. They built all, uh, you know, th this fervor around this this title. And like you said, and you're right. A lot of times, even when you're fucking around, uh, they. <laughs> Hector's always possibly, joking that whatever he says ends up just it being comes true. true. <laughs> yeah. Those like kids pregnant. It uh, just. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, is she Hector? Do you know? No. I, no, no, she. she's <laughs> Okay, Wait, <laughs> calm. No, you can breathe, me, so no, You're but, good. But. To, to say this though, like, see, the day and age, as you see, it's happening more and more. There's so much social media out there. They know that if they say something, release anything, or it's leaked by someone, what's going to happen is there's going to be hype for it, like, like BC just said. And it's all the haters are going to go on there to hate it. All the people that love it are going to go on there to defend it. Right. And it's going to be so much hype. Mm -hmm. And then all eyes are on them when they're on stage. Yeah. And that's what they want. They want to focus. Say, guess what, guys? The rumor was true. This is what we're releasing. Introducing this, people are like, oh, "It really was true. It really was." Like, that's the thing, though. Like some of this stuff yeah. turned out to be fake, and that's the thing. Like they try not to say that it's yes or, or it's a no. Mm -hmm. Some people wait and then they announce it, and that's the thing. It builds so much hype, especially in the day and age where there's so much social media. And I think that's important that they take they use it to their advantage now because like now right. all eyes are on them. And like, why do you want someone to talk after the convention? Like, oh, do you hear all the stuff they announced there? Why not do it before the, yeah, totally. the convention? And then after that, still people are talking about that. You know, like they want people to completely talk about it. And the next time we're going to talk about is when the game is released. And that's the whole thing. They want a buzz going, whether it's good or bad. They want mm -hmm. something being focused on them. And I think that's just like a huge thing that they could take advantage of today. 100%. And, and another good thing or, or something to, to think about, and this is really ubiquitous across many 
mediums of industry barring music because you never see a re-release of an album. Not right. going to happen. It's disrespectful. You don't sound as good as Bonnie Raitt. And you don't sound as good as Genuine. I mean, right. really. No one's going to re-release an album. But movies do it. Sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes it doesn't. Death Wish. And, and the same thing can happen with video games because as time goes on, years and decades go on because now we've been playing video games for 30 years companies like bethesda have been doing this for a long time they develop new engines like we've seen here in fallout 76. imagine some of their older titles this is like money left on the table because it's been 20 years 15 years at least yeah. 20 years i'll say since we've seen like uh the elder scrolls morrowind that was a game that i had on my original xbox that's a long so, time yeah but the, from what i understand because i didn't get into it the story was great and when we see like this new engine for Fallout 76, of course that engine it, it works with Bethesda games, mm. especially now after they've worked on Doom, they've found ways to make things work faster and work smoother. What if they just decide to pick up some of that money that's on the table to you know for a new generation and remaster some of the older games, remaster in this new engine like Fallout, the, you know Fallout New Vegas or uh, mm -hmm. you know some of these older Oblivion, I mean uh, Elder Scrolls games, Oblivion. Uh, they remastered Morrowind. That's just money left on the table for people to experience something old and great in a new way. Kind of the same way we do with movies when remasters and stuff come out. They yeah. don't necessarily have to mm. announce a new game. Yeah. The old games are still great, but if you see yeah. it through a new lens, it's a whole new experience. And I just thought that was a, you know, kind of an enlightening idea or thought I just had because they don't have to necessarily come up with anything else. You know they're going to talk about Doom 2. You know they're going to talk about this new Fallout, but how many of us would yeah. buy the elder i mean you know uh one of these older elder scrolls games i'd buy oblivion in a heartbeat if it looked mm. the way fallout 76 looks yeah i'd yeah. buy Morrowind in a heartbeat if it looked the way that fallout 76 looks so I, it's just, so many things could happen here at e3 i'm well, ah. apparently dj thinks elder scrolls 6 battle royale is coming all right dj <laughs> i mean maybe what? he's gonna be right you know crazier things have what? been said <laughs> one last point though another thing for why they do this to for studios and companies is because when everyone thinks e3 they think of the big three so right. and a lot of people skip over these these game studios and companies and publishers because they're like okay like we're, we're gonna watch sony microsoft nintendo that's the big three you know sure. that's who they focus on but now if you give them a reason to look at you you give them a reason to to be a spotlight on you that's when mm -hmm. you might hit them with a surprise that they weren't expecting while they're watching you because a lot of them would have skipped over you and that's a, that's a way not not to everyone would have skipped over bethesda but some people by the way did have a bad taste in her mouth from what from bethesda which is fallout 4 and now you just announced a different fallout yeah, that's and true. now people are like hey guess what maybe you hey maybe i might watch this now and see what's going on and then they might do something else that you didn't expect so yeah well i'm looking at kind of these um these leaks there's also going to be a devil may cry five coming out i yeah. heard that yeah 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 that was to me, that's, that's last that's year big. didn't they rumor that last year too I could when they rumored that last year they're, they're going to announce that. I'm, I'm actually looking at an image for E3. It says internal use only. It's, it's presented by John Codera. Mm -hmm. uh, it says uh, duration an hour and 45 minutes. These are the games it says. It's Ghost of Tsushima demo. Mm -hmm. Mid Medieval, which is an old PlayStation. Oh, game. yeah, that uh, remaster was announced. Trailer, trailer, PlayStation Party VR mode, Spyro Reignited Trilogy trailer, oh, Spider-Man yes. PS VR mode demo, Shinmu 3 demo, Resident Evil 2 remake, PSVR, Resident Evil 2 remake, P PSVR. Now, this I heard about this a couple days ago, and they said the Resident Evil 2 remake, they've been working on this thing for a few years. Yep. It's using the same engine that they use res to make Resident Evil 7, and it should run just as well as Resident Evil 7. Yep. They remake Resident Evil 2, and it, it's in <laughs> PSVR mode. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm PC's heart can't take it. I, I, yeah. I really can't. Devil May Cry 5 demo, Final Fantasy 7 remake demo, Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Keep those pants clean now, Beastly. Don't be pooping. It's them. too late. It's too late. <laughs> God, they're black already. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer, Bioshock Resurgence PSVR trailer, Bloodborne 2 trailer, Death Stranding demo. That doesn't even sound possible. Last of Us Part 2 demo. So these are going to be gameplay demos. Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Ooh trailer and socom coalition teaser wait holy where, God. Are you, where are you getting yeah. this from 
I'm going to get it to my game right now. I'm going to share. I'm going to share the link. Where are you? Right where now. are you reading this from? Holy shit! From just justbullshit.com. Oh, yeah, God. I'm kind of like so calm. Mm. No, but I'm come this on. In our, in our uh, notes, because be, be, oh, yeah, that God. that that sounds like the coolest freaking E3 ever. If all guys, that stuff comes true. <laughs> look at it. It's it's on gamerant.com. Um, oh my God. That would be the coolest. That was literally together. the first time I was reading that. I heard about Resident Evil 2, but uh, and they said it's using the exact same engine as Resident Evil 7. So I was like, uh, is it, could it be Resident Evil 2 and, and V? Oh, my God. I would oh. love that. that uh, you guys, was... click on that link, Robbie. Tell me I'm not crazy. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's going to take over my main screen, which I'm, oh. it's the, sh the, uh, oh. the podcast, so I probably can't really can, open it. Can but, you yeah. see it not too nerdy? Those notes? Yeah. Am that, I that... crazy? It's not bullshit.com. Well, no, no. I mean, I could open it and drag it over. I I'll say, do that. Like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen I'm because, like, that, that just seems like that just seems like something most my heart and you know, most people's hearts can't handle because that that's a that's a oh, uh, okay. the best E three ever. If that happens, like, that's one of a severe E three. You know what I mean? That's all. I'm like, that's a little too much. That's awesome though. Um, Boom. like you just gotta crown them if they ever do that. Like you crown someone. Like they want next year's E three too if they if they do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be, oh, my heart can barely take it no more. It's so exciting. <laughs> oh, man. All this PSVR stuff, too. I know you guys, do you guys have PSVR? No, no, I don't. It's yes. it's so awesome when, when it's done right. Resident, Resident 7, Evil was, yeah, I was going to say, that's best. the one that was that, done. The I would have loved to play Resident Evil 7 in VR. I bet that would be amazing. Oh, it's so, cool. oh, my God. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Jump scares, yeah. I mean, if so Sony cool. really showed that they had a ton of stuff on PSVR, like, other than... What like what's the system sellers for it anyways? Like Resident Evil Seven? Like what else is there? Resident Evil. Um, let me think. Uh, what's the the other one? That's uh, oh, it was originally on PlayStation. Uh, Super. Yeah. Hot. Oh man, I forgot Super what it was. Super awesome. Um, that's one of the better games. I don't have a ton of games on it. I bought hmm. Star Wars. I mean Star Trek. Uh, uh, Bridge Crew. I bought that. I'm, I'm waiting to play that with the Revolver guys when they. That okay. game looked fun. Shit. That did look fun. Yeah. yeah I just had the new Resident Evil. That that was like BC said. That just me. I I think in general horror games sell Work VR. Well on VR. Yeah. Yeah. Because hundred percent. Yeah. Horror games are so shit your pants scary in VR. Like it's just way too yeah. realistic. It's amazing though. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the horror game that I bought in VR on PlayStation, but it controlled like, ah. Oh. It's like trying to drive your car with your hands controlled like butthole. AB diaper. It was it was horrible, mm. and I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was based on a, a I want to say a crappy movie. So, you guys can talk. I'm typing. Yeah. Do you guys think they'll have a big PSVR presence at E3, like Sony will, or will they focus more I, on the first parties? I think they will. I think they're going to announce a big game. Like, like if what Beastly said is true, like something like that would sell really well you know yeah, what i mean like i think yeah. that's what they'll announce games like that that's gonna make people buy it mm. um and i think that's it like and maybe who knows maybe they might do you think they'll do an update soon for another uh, the other version they already have a new psvr skew out uh it's slightly improved but it's yeah. the same resolution i think they need to go uh at least at least 1080p yeah current. yeah uh, i think yeah. the 1440p might even be better uh but the un until dawn rush of blood is really awesome uh skyrim vr is really awesome uh, Farpoint was a great Farpoint, that's what I was trying to think of too, the one set on Mars, right? That game did look cool. With, and yeah. it has the actual gun. Yeah. So that that there is um, you know, kind of a new and special experience as well. And uh, the game I just bought for thirty bucks isn't even in this list. I feel like I wasted my money if it's not even on the list. For God's sakes, Beastly. <laughs> Fortnite no, VR, oh my god, DJ. Get out of here. Get out of here. Not I mean, oh, that would be dizzy as hell trying to build things. Oh, <laughs> there, God, a, there is like, a Battle yeah. Royale on a VR. It's on a Oculus. Yeah. And uh, Briar plays that. And he's, you know, he's, you're hiding on the side of houses. And Don't those guys only supplies. play Destiny 2? They, really? Hmm. It happens every now and then. I, you know, Destiny servers go down. Yeah, uh, the yeah, the servers go 12. down. They're crying in the corner. <laughs> yeah, and things. Hmm. That's why I'm so happy for this. You know, uh, Revolver Live is a great podcast, and it's kind of a conversational podcast about a plethora of but shit. But man, all video games are awesome, you know? Yeah, they are. They, they certainly are. And, yeah. and we're lucky enough to be able to play them all. Hopefully you guys are able to play them all. And if you can't, your day's coming. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> it's coming soon. 
So that I think that will conclude today's episode of Beastly Thoughts Revival. We're going to be on Twitter together, holding hands virtually, coming up with some this is new. Okay, holding. I'm yeah. holding your hand, guys. There you See, go. <laughs> this is gay. <laughs> it's fine. This you can't there be you that. Go. It can't be. You can't. First, you oh. can't say that. Second, yeah. it can't be that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just you know, kidding. Relax. But, uh, Nothing against we, gay we, people. It's fine. We we got some great uh, ideas, but we want your ideas as well for the new title of the podcast. Uh, and again, there's nothing wrong with Beastly Thoughts. Beastly Thoughts Live, the thoughts of the Beastly crew. Yeah, we're just not exactly sure the exact title yet. We know it's Beastly Thoughts something. We're just not entirely sure yet. How about Beastly said it's not too late. Beastly's for Apple and Oranges that. podcast. <laughs> I thought we were Beastly's doing that. Apples and oranges. No, I, wanted to, I wanted to have our identity. This is something great and it's something special and I fucking love it. it makes me so feel Beastly rob us call not too nerdy apples and oranges. There you go. <laughs> our identities. There you go. Apples and Orange podcast. Come on, man. Let's vote for it right now. <laughs> we should just, just do one episode as a, as a joke. Follow us on Twitter and we're going to have a list up and you guys can yeah. let us know. Man, I had something else I wanted to plug, too. I'm trying to remember. Oh, do we know the exact, like, do we have, you guys said you want to go live on Saturdays from now on, right? Like, 2 p.m. Pacific time, we're thinking, for a schedule? Uh, Something like that? Like, 5 Eastern? Well, we'll we'll talk about that on Twitter, because, you know, I don't want to haggle and and do that live. So, we'll talk about that on Twitter. We'll talk about it privately. Okay. Yeah. And and that way, we can work out something. Whatever time we decide, I'm down. Beastly's thoughts on Destiny podcast. Oh, I'm sure he loves talking about Destiny all the time already. So, you know, you can't (laughs) wait to do it even more. No, no, I don't. Let's make this a second Destiny podcast for Beastly, because, I mean, Revolver basically is one, so. Uh, No, Revolver's not. But these guys love Destiny. Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, yeah. They they, they love talking about Destiny. When Today, this new shit's coming out. We're going to hit on that for sure. So I, I got to make sure I have my pillow behind me. So I can get some rest. <laughs> All right, I think that is going to conclude the show, though, today. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. We will be back again next week. Uh, yeah, likely Saturday. Everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, yeah, next week we'll be in the middle of E3. I assume if it's Saturday, we're probably going to go live after EA's conference as well, because that's the first conference happening next Saturday. So we'll probably discuss that. And then, of course, yeah, talk more about E3 and what we expect to see and all that good stuff. So everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, we will see you live on the next BC Thoughts show. Take care, everyone. And, See you uh, guys. Bye-bye. See you.